very warm welcome and a very very good evening to all the attendees uh should we take a minute or so for all our peers to join in and then we start the session we'll just take one or two minutes for everybody to join in welcoming everyone yeah. from rohil great i think we have people uh, joining in one after the other and let's start this uh, really interesting talk that has been titled from horse pa to horse pa i think as an engineer even as uh, kids we relate to automobiles on a daily life basis uh, each one of us may be using a two or a three or a four wheel you know for uh, mobility from one place to another i think automobiles are considered one of the most important inventions for mankind and in this session today we have really asked dr ganeshan to talk the talk how automobile has revolutionized mobility sector and how it is responsible for forward movement of the world also the speaker is dealing with the evolution of present day automobiles to understand evolution of mobility sector of the past the best way is to appreciate where the auto industry is today and where it will be in the future Dr Ganeshan is a author for the titles Thermodynamics Basic and Applied Internal Combustion Engines Gas Turbines he is former professor a professor emeritus department of mechanical engineering at IIT Madras so far published more than 100, 440 national and international journals and conferences he has also received a lifetime achievement award from international society of engineering energy environment and sustainability in 2019 for his valuable contribution in the area of energy and environment he is a fellow of SAE indian national academy of engineering and national environment science academy It's great to great honor to have you sir and I think the audience would love to hear from you over to you sir please please take it from here Yeah thank you very much uh, for the introduction at the outset I thank Tata Megrahel or Megrahel International for inviting me to present a topic which is dear to me is uh, from horse power to horse power so when i said uh, the title horse power to horse power many people were asking me what exactly is that english if you see that per se is a very cute but a funny language now if you see the title the first horse then a space is there then power then it became horse power as one word so what i am going to talk or what i am going to present today is the how we the mobility sector evolved over a period of time and uh, what was yesterday what is today and what will be tomorrow and in this process when you have to understand the basic of uh, the horsepower to that mobility sector all of us know that engine is the heart of the system today so if you have to understand the engine 
you require little bit not very great but little bit on thermodynamics and also internal combustion engine i normally start with a lighter wind so people to understand that what exactly is that will not be very monotonous i will go with some jokes etc so that to make it lively and let us begin uh, today with this uh, slide and the first slide is our second slide english is a cute but a funny language for example take the three letters o h and w you can combine it as w h o or h o w that is who or how the three letters can be coined in two ways who and how but their meanings are entirely different so let me start if you cannot understand the difference between who and how what is the embarrassment you may face i start with a small story one of the prime ministers from the non english speaking country our country is english speaking so we can speak in english there are countries where people cannot speak english so non speaking countries wanted to prime minister of that country wanted to go and visit united states usa well being a prime minister he cannot go and wander on the street so there is a protocol the thing is that at the time you are the you have to meet the president shake hand with him exchange pleasantries etc but this gentleman was little skeptical in the sense he does not speak english very much and therefore how to cope up with that all his advisers and ad said don't worry sir we will take care now first you go and visit meet the president at the time the president was uh, obama you shake hand with him and say how are you in all probability he will say i am fine i am fine and you say me too me too that's all then we will take over you talk in your language and he will talk in english we will translate and think and go so with always saying how are you how are you he went and uh, met the president shugant with him instead of saying how are you by mistake he said who are you so the president was little taken aback he was thinking that a prime minister coming all the way he is not going to ask me who are you and he is joking so let me also not say i am the president of america etc he said i am the husband of my wife michelle he said this man did not know what exactly he was telling and he said me to me to so if you do not understand the difference between how and who it can land you in a greater dub similarly in in the case of uh, automobiles there are two varieties one powered by gasoline and another powered by diesel and therefore we call it as a gasoline engine and the diesel engine so unless you understand the basic difference between the gasoline and the diesel engine you may not be able to appreciate how the whole thing is working and why we are getting a better performance in a particular uh, engine and why we are not able to get and how we got into these two engines when it was invented why it was invented and what we are going to do tomorrow uh, the tomorrow is what we are i am going to talk about now the uh, the title is uh, would have been put as yesterday today and tomorrow of our mobility sector what we used man used for its mobility yesterday what we are using it today and what we will be using it tomorrow is what is the gist of the talk the better way would have been is the horse power h space p to hp to ep 
that is yesterday we were using the power of the horse for the mobility today we are using the power of the engine for our mobility tomorrow we may be using electrical power for uh, our mobility but i will be basically touch on what is the power that we are using it today that is on the engine so that is regarding the present day automobiles this is what i am going to elaborate so if you want to see the title in a pictorial way that is what it is then from horsepower what was that this is the horsepower that we used for our mobility and to the horsepower h and p are together that is what we are using it today and tomorrow what we are going to do is electrical power and this is what is going to be that is the evolution of our automobile sector is from the power of the horse to power of the engine and to power of the uh, electrical power Ele electric and electronics is what is going to rule the world in the near future now yesterday we were using this today we are using this and tomorrow we are going to use it so please note that yesterday is not 24 hours and i will uh, turn at what is the year that we are going to start we will see and before that we will see what was our original suv today we call our uh, cars or sport utility vehicle suv but the original uh, suv is this this is our original suv that man used for his mobility and to you see all the system that the original suv had you are having it in our present day mobility sector or in other words the car also for example now if you see it has had an eco-friendly intake system and thereby you have an eco-friendly exhaust system it had and it had the global positioning system that has ears and eyes then you have a group of uh, uh, this one and then we will uh, go to the four into four power train this one and interestingly you had a independent rear suspension system and you had a memory and a braking system were also there and their straps and uh, uh, steering is also was there and finally some leather this one is also there now if you go and see your vehicles today all those system what i was enumerating is also available in the system but the difference is that you have an eco-friendly intake system but today we have petrol and diesel for our uh, running the automobiles that is non-eco-friendly and these are all hydrocarbon fuels that we are using it for mobility for uh, using in the automobiles and when we are using a non-eco-friendly intake that is petrol and diesel you are to get the non-eco-friendly the exhaust system also that means people are blaming us blaming the automobile engineers mechanical engineers saying that the automobile is the mainly responsible for polluting the atmosphere i will not touch too much on the pollution side but uh, i would see i would say that why this thing is polluting if at all if you have to know how to reduce it all those things we will talk to over then if you see all the system that you have which you have seen the other thing uh, it was there and therefore uh, in the previous slide if you see that is um, all the system that you had previously in that you are having it in uh, this system also so tomorrow what we are going to have tomorrow's suv is going to be entirely different that is
and and therefore what is uh, required is a slow transformation is required but if at all why the transformation of the mechanical power produced by the engine to go for electrical power i will come to that a little uh, later and uh, in this lecture the yesterday means what were happening before 1920 what was our mobility sector and uh, today means between 1920 and 2020 that is up to now tomorrow is beyond 2020 what is our automobile sector is going to be so that is what i am going to talk about as an introduction and uh, i do not know how many of you are aware that the first form of transport system for the human being is shanks pony and if you see the history people uh, write that shanks pony was that but uh, you should understand what exactly by the by what is the shanks pony so next wait for the next interesting slide and this is what is shanks pony and uh, please do not uh, imagine too much on this figure and this is nothing but the human feet so the shanks pony is nothing but the human feet that we use to for the mobility of ourselves then man thought why i should use my own uh, feet for the mobility can i do it with animals then animals came into being the horses and donkeys as well as camels were used for our mobility sector so the yesterday transport system that is uh, before 1920 etc uh, in world of days 1870s and 1890s we were using these type of animals for our mobility but the revolution came when man invented his uh, wheel the invention of the wheel uh slightly started changing the uh, mobility sector and then what happened is the number of uh, vehicles driven by the horses came on the roads and therefore like the different models of the car as we have it today we have different types of uh, horse carriages were done and people were using it for their mobility and the early part of 19th century uh, the engine the, the because of the horses early part of the century the because of the horses for the transportation we faced a lot of problem the thousands and thousands of the horses were running on the streets and uh, it is uh, if you see if you google it and see you will find that they were dropping about 150 to 200000 uh tons of uh, the cow dung i mean horse uh, uh, dung the people were using it 150 to 200000 horses but they were dropping about 1500 to 2000 tons of the horse dropping and you think that 1500 to 2000 tons is uh, such a huge amount but even if you take today today automobiles as i take the case of uh, hyderabad or chennai city more than uh, 1.5 million vehicles are running on the road every day they put the products of combustion which is the uh, exhaust gases from the engines it is more than 2000 tons in hyderabad as well as the uh, chennai city that is what we are pouring in so similarly these horses were uh, polluting the atmosphere with their harsh dresses but it was not a gaseous pollution as we see it today but it was the pollution uh, of solid and liquid not only about 1500 to 2000 tons of the product uh, the tons of the horse droppings they were also pouring about 200000 liters of urine on the street it was very unbearable for the mankind and they thought that no more we will be able to use uh, this uh, system for our mobility we have to find something new that is what man, man thought so in the early part of 19th century people started thinking that there must be a innovative invention by which uh, i will get rid of the horses 
and at this stage the human ingenuity and the technology started moving in the direction of the horse power so from power of the horse people started moving into the power of the engine that is the horse power and if you see uh, people wanted some mechanical means not the animals but mechanical means for the transport this came true by the invention of internal combustion engine and the credit goes to two pioneers namely august auto and rudolph diesel and uh, uh, this is what uh, that is the august auto on the left side or rudolph diesel on the right side and auto uh, invented the spark ignition engine and the diesel invented the compression ignition engine and these two engines or uh, ruling the automobile sector as on today and the same problem as our forefathers faced namely the pollution uh, we are also facing a very similar problem uh, today so that means these two engines namely the spark ignition and the compression ignition invented by august auto and rudolph diesel is ruling the automobile sector as on uh, today now the first horseless carriage on the american road was this one is the christie's uh, front drive and uh, fisher's the world beater so if you see today's automobile and the first automobile came on the american street these are the two times that is uh, they were running without brakes etc it uh, i understand that we under, we should understand that they were running at about 5 to 10 kilometers per hour there is no brake but somebody seems it you uh, used to run before the this one that disease coming etc uh, congress that is american congress is equivalent to our um, parliament and they said, I, uh, wherever I go, I used to tell them uh, these uh, wordings. The caution from the American US Congress, when they saw the first automobile on the American street, they said it may someday be more revolutionary in the development of human society than the invention of the wheel. This is going to completely change our living reported the joint committee of u.s congress in 1995 when the first horseless carriage they called it as the horseless carriage that is the automobile rolled on the american roads at the same time it said never in history has society been confronted with a power so full of potential danger and at the same time full of promise for the future of the man and the peace of the world. They said auto invention of this type of automobile run by the horsepower or the engine is going to revolutionize the world. That we have seen and it has become nowadays either we are using a two-wheeler, three-wheeler or four-wheeler. Without uh, these uh, automobiles, we may not be able to live. It has come to that stage. So everybody whichever engineering you have or a scientist you are you uh, definitely be using one of them uh, for your mobility and uh, this is uh, what is happening that is people wanted to change from the horses to the engine and we have changed in about uh, 1894 or 1895 and then today again we wanted to change this so these hundred years of development and if you see, that is in 1967, this is 1967 photo, that is when I joined IIT Madras as a uh, student in 1967. And this is the one of the road, we call it as the Mount Road at the time. And we see how many automobiles are running. There is only one automobile and rest of them are regular carts, etc. But over the period, if you see, you are not able to go on the uh, street. So even in 1967, even in 1967, uh, when 
uh, I was a student and my professors used to say that uh, when you are using these type of engines and all these engines are taking the gasoline and diesel for the mobility and these are the fossil fuels and uh, at that time they said by about 2000 by about 2000 year 2000 uh, we may be running out of fuel so it, I was told in 1967 by about 2000 the fuels will go but in 2000 came I uh, went and uh, my professor said because there is no fuel you are going to walk on the road because you cannot use these automobiles without the fuel but 2000 when I came out of uh, the AD campus and I find that I was not able to walk on the road. Why? Because there were so many automobiles on the streets that there is no space to walk. So the previous slide I showed that how many vehicles are that uh, neck to neck that is uh, going. So much of uh, automobiles on the road, there is no place for the uh, man to walk on the street. And therefore, what, what we have to learn? The thing is that these fuels, people think that is going to be exhausted uh, soon. But I have a different perception. My perception is as long as the mankind will live, these two engines will stay. These two engines will stay as long as the mankind, this is my perception, my view. Why I am saying it is because the if the god has created if the mother earth has created this fuel over a period of millions of years and these are all our forefathers and therefore these fuel as we will not let our children down these fuels our forefathers are coming out will not let us down you will have enough uh, fuel for another 100 to 200 years this is my view but then the question is why we are thinking of changing these engines to electrical power or why we what is the need for the change for this engine the main problem is pollution when mankind faced the pollution of the solid and liquid in 1900s we are facing the same problem in 2000 so under over the 100 years so many vehicles on the road and this is what is happening into that so these two engines are being used for our mobility. The first one we call it the uh, spark ignition engine and the second is the diesel engine. And the people, the students used to ask me, sir, I will always get confused between the spark ignition engine, diesel engine, which is sucking air, which is sucking air fuel mixture, etc. So what is the difference between these two engines? I in my lighter vein, I used to tell them the spark ignition engines are the love married engines and the diesel engine is an arranged marriage engine. So if you know the difference between the love marriage and an arranged marriage, there should not be any difficulty for you to understand the spark ignition engine and the compression ignition engine. The spark ignition engine, what is happening is that fuel and air is coming out uh, from a carburetor. So I call it that uh, the fuel is a hero. Uh, no, fuel is a heroine and air is the hero. So hero and heroine are meeting at the carburetor. That is you and your fiancé meet it at some place and you are taken into the system getting compressed and if you decide to marry the sparking is taking place, the marriage is taking place. So after the marriage, you have children, CO2, H2O, O2, N2, NOx, etc. That means the products of combustion, if you have a perfect understanding between yourself and your spouse, you will produce only two children, CO2 and H2O. And therefore, in this engine, if you want to get the best out of this, you require to have a complete combustion. The complete combustion is that the hydrogen and the carbon. The fuel that we are using is a hydrocarbon which contains the hydrogen and carbon and during the combustion process the hydrogen is converted to uh, water vapor and the carbon is converted to the carbon dioxide. 
if a perfect combustion takes place, the exhaust will produce carbon dioxide and water vapor. But unfortunately, we are not able to uh, burn it 100% uh, and therefore, a lot of the products of combustion are coming in like CO, CO2, H2O, unburned hydrocarbons and so many pollutants are coming. The reason for this that we have to find is that if you could convert the fuel to carbon dioxide and water vapor by means of air, there will not be much of a pollution. But this carbon monoxide and NOx etc. that is coming uh, into the atmosphere is a danger for our health. And therefore, we are as the number of uh, the vehicles are increasing day by day, we are we have to find that pollution level is also going up. And if you see the Delhi etc. Now we are not able to breathe properly. So ultimately we are losing our health. That means what we our forefathers were 100 years ago or 120 years ago, we are at the same position today also. And therefore we have to find an alternate solution for reducing the pollution, what our forefathers did so that we will be able to uh, breathe normally. So one of the reason uh, is for the pollution is the uh, low merit engine, that is the spark ignition engine. The other one is the compression ignition engine. The compression ignition engine is a diesel engine. In this diesel engine, what is happening? Our hero, air is sucked in into the compression chamber. Air is compressed. So at the end of the compression stroke, you inject fuel into that, that fuel uh, burns and produces the power, then expansion and the exhaust take place. Whether it is a spark ignition engine or the compression ignition engine, it works on the same four stroke five even principle, namely suction, compression, comp uh, combustion, expansion and the exhaust. These five events are done in the four strokes, suction, compression, expansion and the exhaust strokes. Whether it is a uh, spark ignition engine or the compression ignition engine. These are all the, uh, the four strokes that are taking place. And therefore, in the case of a diesel engine, what is happening is the air is sucked, air is compressed and uh, fuel is injected and uh, then it is burning. So it is like a engine manager. Suppose you are in the final year or uh, you have uh, already finished where this is. Uh, most of you would have married and if you are already in the uh, coming out of the college, your parents would have put some pressure on you to go to the uh, see the girl etc. for your marriage and you are taken to the bride's room and at the time bride is shown for a few seconds that is the injection and if you agree, yes the marriage takes place otherwise you go for to see the next channel. So after the fuel is injected again, uh, it getting combusted. Here also the combustion is becoming a problem and the number of products of combustion is coming on the road. That is the combustion products or CO2, H2O. Apart from that CO, sulfur dioxide, unburned hydrocarbons and soot and all these particles are coming. So the, the, the mankind is facing a very similar situation of what we have faced previously hundred years back by our forefathers into that and therefore today's engines if you see that we are almost the saturating into that the main problem why why that is happening it is happening because of the fact that we have not enough time for the combustion to take place now those who have already undergone support all these things kindly look at my book i have written a book on ic engines also and if you look at my book, I have already explained all these things. Those who are interested may look at the uh, book on uh, IC engines by my name. And what is what is the problem? The problem is the time. Now, if you take an engine running at about 3000 RPM and you have only about 30 milliseconds for the uh, whole process of suction, compression, combustion, expansion and the exhaust to occur. So all the four strokes have to be finished and that thing you have a combustion process also. 
the time that we are giving for the compression is about 3 to 4 milliseconds. The problem is that we do not have a perception of what a millisecond is. Probably you will be able to perceive on seeing the clock at uh, 25, 26, 27, you will be able to see each and every second and perceive it. But one thousandth of a second, one millisecond, what is it? The man is not able to perceive it. But if the combustion has to take place in three milliseconds, having we do not have a concept of what is a millisecond is, what is the time duration, how I perceive it if I do not know, how I am able to. And therefore, as we have not understood the process of combustion well, we are uh, putting all sorts of the products of combustion on the road, carbon monoxide, unburned hydrocarbons, not soot, etc., etc. And therefore, we have to find an alternative solution uh, for this. And for this, you have to understand the thermodynamics of the cycle. If you have to understand the working principle, you have to understand the thermodynamics. You don't require, but all those engineering uh, people would have uh, done either in your school or in the college, uh, basic thermodynamics on that. So if you have a basic understanding of the thermodynamics, you will be able to appreciate the present day mobility sector, why it is doing, why we are not able to improve, etc. And as you see, this is the four strokes, suction, first one is suction, compression, expansion and the exhaust that is taking place and the corresponding the PV diagram we call it as the pressure volume diagram. What exactly happening in an engine is uh, uh, happening uh, uh, as the variation of the pressure with respect to volume. As the piston moves from up and down, as the piston moves up and down, that is we call it at the bottom dead center to the top dead center or the top dead center to the bottom dead center, there is a variation of the volume that is taking place. As the volume variation is taking place, you find that pressure variation also and therefore if you plot the variation of the pressure and the volume, you will uh, find uh, the thing that is uh, then for to be uh, more exactly, this is what you will get for a yeah, uh, so auto engine uh, or in other words, uh, uh, for a petrol engine, this will be the PV diagram. That is process, there are uh, four things, one to two is a compression process and two, two to three is the heat addition or the compression process and three, four is the expansion process and four, one is the heat rejection process. So this is how we teach the students that it consisting of the section and the uh, exhaust we will omit for this analysis because we assume to take to take it as the constant uh, uh, pressure, uh, constant pressure. And therefore, if you have to explain to your students, this is the diagram that we will use, namely the heat addition and the heat rejection. And as you could see in this figure, the process two, three, the process 2, 3 is the combustion process where we have shown is by a straight line at constant volume. And therefore, achieving combustion at constant volume means the combustion must be instantaneous. The combustion instantaneous means you cannot have any time lapse. But the time lapse that is taking place is about 3 milliseconds and we cannot even allow that 3 milliseconds to happen for the combustion to take place. Now what you have to understand is 3 milliseconds is 3000 microseconds. That 3000 microseconds if you can make it to about 2000 microseconds or 1000 microseconds, you will approach towards, uh, towards a constant volume cycle. So in the case of a uh, uh, spark ignition engine, we have to find a method by which you have to combust the fuel almost instantaneously or in not to milliseconds itself. So we are groping under the dock as a uh, combustion engineer or a mechanical engineer. I have not understood the combustion process correctly, thoroughly, and therefore I am not able to make the fuel to uh, deliver all its energy at constant volume. And therefore, we, 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 have, we will have a, a PV diagram slightly different. And next, if you see the slide, 
the diesel engine uh, in the case of a uh, engine we say that the heat is addition uh, added at the constant volume whereas the uh, diesel engine what we do is we do not have a spark plug in the case of a spark ignition engine you have a spark plug which ignites the fuel but in the case of a diesel engine there is no spark plug the fuel gets ignited by itself the fuel gets ignited by fuel and uh, burning by itself so the fuel injected into the combustion chamber during the final stage of the compression getting ignited by uh, itself and there we say that the combustion process is taking place at a constant pressure. The combustion is taking place at the constant pressure, whereas in the case of a, a spark ignition engine, it is taking place at a constant volume. Now, some people ask me the question, sir, how is it possible that we will be able to have a constant pressure combustion? Because in the case of a, a oil, the process is the combustion, there will be an increasing pressure because the heat energy is released. Then how, when the pressure is changing, how do you say that it is going to be at a constant pressure? Now, what you have to understand is that there are two processes that is taking place. One is that heat, because of the heat addition, there is a pressure increase. And because of the volume increase during the expansion process, there is a pressure decrease. So both the pressure increase and pressure decrease, the rate of pressure increase and the rate of pressure decrease getting uh, equalized, then you will be able to get the constant pressure combustion. All these things is an ideal cycle. The ideal cycle, the ideal way for the combustion, if you can do it at a constant pressure, this is wonderful. And ideal way for the petrol engine is to do it at a constant volume. So whether it's a constant volume or constant pressure, we do it for explaining to the students, but it is not possible in practice to achieve at a constant volume or a constant pressure a combustion. Then uh, what you do, this is what actually a PV diagram will look like for an internal combustion engine. You will not be able to say whether it is for the diesel engine or the petrol engine, but this is a way that actual PV diagram. The PV diagram is nothing but an ECG of the engine. And by seeing this PV diagram, you will be able to see how best the automobile is going to work or the heart of the system is the engine and therefore its ECG has to be perfect. And if you get a good PV diagram, then the performance of the engines uh, will be uh, much, much uh, better. So the thermodynamics, uh, people have started working on different types of cycles, the diesel, uh, dual cycle, Atkinson cycle, Miller cycle, etc. Probably all these things I have explained in the book, I will not uh, uh, spend more time on that. In order to reduce the pollution, we have done a lot of research to improve the performance as well as the reduce the pollution as the different types of engine called the homogeneously charged HCC CA engine and the stratified charge compression ignition engine, etc., etc. We have a number of uh, development has taken place by which we are able to reduce the pollution. But still, the problem is if we reduce the pollution by 100%, the uh, vehicle population increases by 400%. And therefore, anyway, the atmosphere is going to be uh, always polluted because of the rate of increasing of these vehicles on the uh, road. Now, if you have to understand that why there are so many, uh, because for a common man, for an engineer, I'll write all these things uh, are okay. For a common man, what he's going to ask is how many uh, uh, liters, how many kilometers per liter is what I am going to get. Whether you do it by constant volume and constant process immaterial, immaterial for him. And therefore, for as for an engineer like us, we have to concentrate that how to improve the mileage of these engines. In order to improve the mileage of the AC engine, so there are various performance parameters that we would, uh, you should understand, right from the air fuel ratio uh, to speed. There are a number of them because of just the emission like NOx, CO, USC, and smoke will also be coming in. 
and I have explained in my book all these details. Those who are interested, kindly look into that bit. I do not have time to explain each uh, one of them. Each one of them has got an effect on the performance of these engines. And therefore, if you, we are almost reach, reaching a plateau in the development of this engine, and we may not be able to do much on that, and therefore we have to tackle on the uh, pollution side. Because what we were facing before 1920 is now uh, facing is 2020. And therefore, the modern automobile trends, people start uh, thinking that whether we will be able to switch over to another power plant. Another power plant is the engine is the power plant for the present day automobile. The future may be uh, the electric. But I would put it the best fuel for an internal combustion engine without pollution is hydrogen. If we can use hydrogen as a fuel for this engine, for these engines, then if you are able to combust it, we will not have any carbon monoxide and burn hydrocarbons or soot or smoke, etc. But we will be producing a complete combustion, namely water vapor. And probably it may solve our water problem also. If you uh, run some 100 kilometers and come, you may be collect about two gallons of water, etc. And therefore, the modern, uh, modern automobile trend, there are a lot of people working on it from General Motors to Tata Motors. Throughout the world, there are a lot of uh, research is going on to improve the performance and find whether alternative fuel, etc. But these people are also simultaneously working on the electrical uh, power. But in my opinion, even if we have the electrical power, we may be reduce the pollution on the streets, on the cities, but somewhere else we have to, uh, but the carbon balance will not be affected because what is happening is the, the chemical energy of the fuel is converted to the mechanical energy. In electrical power, we think that electrical power is converted to mechanical energy, but producing the electric power, you require the battery. Battery is again as chemical energy. So the wherever, whether it is an uh, engine, or a motor, in order to power it, you require the battery, and therefore, for the battery, then we have to have the chemical energy stored in that, uh, which uh, is able to produce, uh, generate electricity and able to do that. And therefore, the future, how we should go? Today, we are seeing that there are problems, and we are trying to tackle the problem to the best way that is possible. And uh, people complain that the pollution is increasing. And the question is how we are going to see. So there are a lot of General Motors to Tata Motors. People are working on uh, this one. And the modern automobile trend is that the globalization for the automotive industry has greatly accelerated during the 1990s because the pollution levels were increasing and people have started thinking on different direction. This is due to the construction of the important uh, overseas facilities, etc. That lot of uh, Upcoming, where a lot of uh, improvements were coming on the automobile sector. Some of the modern cars, so people started uh, using it in different types of uh, cars into that. So, different uh, this, the modern trends in automobile is you make it small and make it smooth and run, etc. And the, thereby, the different way the different modern trends in automobile global telematics have come into picture. Because even to navigate today, you can use GPS system. So if you use that to Google map, you will be able to say that you need not have to ask somebody where is the way, what is the way, etc. So the total modern automobile trend is moving towards the electrical power uh, or the electronics and it is uh, positioned by GPS, etc, etc. And therefore tomorrow's vehicle so today's vehicles that we have seen, it has reached its plateau for the performance as well as the pollution level. And then tomorrow, the modern automobiles will be something uh, different. And if you see uh, the transport of the 21st century, that is beyond 2020, uh, we will also be taken care of uh, by the electronics and navigation. Probably people are suggesting uh, people are uh, that we will be able to run these engines. Uh, without the driver itself. Uh, these uh, vehicles without the driver itself, 
so the driverless cars may be coming into uh, work and tomorrow's vehicles will be a uh, such a way that the on the road one vehicle may be able to speak to the other vehicle and uh, then it may be uh, autonomous and it will be able to do is etc so whatever that you require today on your uh, home or this one may be made available uh, in the automobile of uh, tomorrow and the electrical power but i have a fear that people are saying that we will try to convert all our uh, vehicles of today into electrical power and maybe 2030 2040 2050 but in my opinion it may not be possible we have to do with a caution the caution is that where is the power now we have to charge these batteries and we have to charge the battery we require electric power unless otherwise in the future we are able to find a, the solar energy exclusively for uh, charging the batteries and if the solar cell efficiencies can be improved then probably we will be moving in the uh, better direction but as of today we require If you have to uh, see whether we have got enough power we are not able to have the lights burning fans running in almost all the villages uh, remote etc we have not electrified the whole of india and therefore we in my opinion we should uh, tread with a little caution but one day it is going to come but uh, people ask me when it is going to come maybe beyond 2075 2075 we will be able to or there is a breakthrough in the battery technology people are using it the thermal batteries people are now trying to use it um, uh, nuclear batteries and people say if we can uh, invent a nuclear battery and put the power it can work for 100 years so there are a lot of thinkings are coming into the picture and this type of vehicle then if you are able to have a new invention on the battery if you are able to power these uh, motors by means of electricity driven from uh, non chemical method probably that will be uh, very very be interesting to see and lot of work is going on for the tomorrow's vehicle and the whole thing telematics is coming into the picture in the telematics that everything will be controlled by the satellite etc so in this one vehicle may be able to uh, speak to other vehicle and the whole thing can be driven comparatively safely as we are doing it uh, today so telematics is the combination of uh, informatics and um, uh, telecommunication and informatics becomes a telematics so that sector is moving very forward in uh, doing that so the car of the future the outlook is that one day definitely we will be able to change it but we should not especially in india i would put it that we should not be hurrying it so we should try to produce all infrastructure even if you are trying to make electrical car there must be start charging stations and you cannot uh, the, the range is about 400 to 500 kilometers and the people are saying that we are now trying to have a range about 700 to 800 kilometers yes it will come it is going to come but uh, my thing is that all these things will change it should change only slowly so the future outlook is be that the telematics electronics everything put together that will revolutionize our mobility uh, sector so the car of the future tomorrow's vehicle will be different and it will be very different not as we are doing today it may be a driverless car people are using it uh, 36 volt battery uh, from 12 volt system and the 72 volts battery 96 volt battery people are trying different different things throughout the world a lot of research is going on definitely we will change towards the electrical car and this one so the future of the car may look something uh, so different and if you see inside so the dashboard will be entirely different what what we are seeing it today and therefore the future of uh, this one different types of cars and different ways it can and he can have a car to run on the road as well as in the water also so there are possibilities so there is endless solution uh, that is available and therefore we are 
But in India, weather is a maitha reality as on today. Tomorrow may be uh, this one. If you say that we wanted to change all our vehicles in 2025 into electrical vehicle, this is not going to happen because you require at least 30, 30, 33 kilowatts uh, per 100 kilometers range of electrical power. And uh, there are 1 million, 120 million vehicles are running on the road. And I, I estimated it. And I find that national electrical grid in India installed capacity is about 362.12 gigawatt uh, or uh, gigawatt or uh, terawatt about the, on 30th September 2019. And over a period, we require much more power into that. And therefore, we have to increase our installed capacity in that. So I leave it to my imagination that today, if you say there is a future for the uh, electric vehicle, no doubt about it, but that is not going to happen in 2025 or 2050. In my opinion, maybe by 21st, uh, uh, 2100, probably all our vehicles uh, will be that. So for that, we look at a power surplus. So how we are going to generate the power surplus? Either the, we cannot uh, depend on wind or the uh, water for the generating power, either the nuclear power, that is a little bit uh, dangerous, people will say, and you have the risks involved into that. The solar power, solar power say that they have the energy, uh, they, they, they have the capacity to generate, and therefore we are moving in that direction, and unless we make it a power surplus, in our country uh, about this one, we should not hurry into converting all our cars or the vehicles into that, giving this incentive, that incentive, etc. I would uh, suggest that we should try to convert all our public sector buses and omnibuses and private buses using electrical vehicles. Slowly do. The finally you come to our automobiles that is a self-driven car that each one we can do that. But the public transport system should be addressed first. So that uh, it, it be, that is what is most polluting because it is not maintained properly. And therefore, we should address to change all these systems. The public transport is not that huge compared to all the vehicles running on the road. And uh, unless we have a power surplus, as again and again, I wanted to emphasize on that, we should not go in a hurry for converting all this into electrical car. Of course, the industry experts see a definite need and a place for the aftermarket of electrical telematic system. Okay, I make a system and if you say that that is going to cut 50 lakhs of rupees and how many of us will be able to afford. And therefore, we have to find a, a simple solution for that. It cannot be very costly. And um, uh, water, uh, so we, what I'm trying to say is that uh, that is the original equipment manufacturer will consider all those things if there is a market. And if you have to market, it has to be cost effective into that and that one has to look at it. But in reality, the popularity of the uh, electric telematic vehicles will be dependent on the price. That is what I wanted to say. The OEMs will have to find the right fit at the right price uh, and to increase in demand, then will be, they will be profitable. Hopefully, the automatic self, uh, service sector will find a different way. Today, the roadside mechanics are uh, uh, tinkering and uh, doing the system, but tomorrow it will be entirely things. Something goes wrong, you remove the uh, chip or the board. Electric, uh, electronic uh, things are uh, required. And the electronic uh, telematics will also become integrated into our daily life uh, life today. So this will come one day. And some independent repairers may fear that they may not be able to survive. But any change will affect some people. Others will see a light leading to a new uh, business. And every problem has a solution. So some people will find a problem. But every problem has a solution. Today we have the problem on the electricity to run these vehicles. But for that, you have to find a simple solution. So all my friends, I would like to say that don't look at the problems. Problems are there. 
we do not have enough electricity that problem is not the you you should not be looking at the problem what is the simple solution for that for which i will narrate two stories on uh, this one uh, they uh, don't uh, focusing on the, don't focus on the problem only focus on the solution probably some of you would have known this when nasa began uh, the launch of the astronaut into the space they found that the pens would not write work at zero gravity that ink will not flow they sent a pen with the astronaut but when they went there they are not able to uh, write it because ink is not flowing at zero gravity that never uh, occurred to them and then it happened to solve this problem it took americans one decade they developed a pen that uh, worked at zero gravity upside down under water practically any surface and they invented a pen uh, spending about 12 million dollars they produced a pen it can write anywhere in the universe but that is the uh, solution they fought because they looked at the problem then what did the russians do the russians sent a pencil with the astronauts so pencil there is no problem no following of ink etc they could write so simple solution is 1 rupee 20 paise and instead of that you need not have to spend 12 million dollars for that so if you don't look at the problem look at the solution the solution the problem is that when is not writing the solution is the pencil there is another interesting story uh, namely case study 2 in that one of the most uh, memorable case studies on the japanese management was the case of a empty soap box uh, which happened to one of the japan's biggest cosmetic com- uh, companies now i lived in japan for one year uh, for my post doctoral work i find the japanese people are very nice very this one and uh, uh, 99% of them are very honest and they don't cheat and they are very particular now if i pay 1 rupee i should get the return for that 1 rupee and therefore one gentleman from went and bought a soap box with the soap when he came and opened it the soap box he did not find the soap then he wrote a big letter to the company what is this you i am cheated i you took the money for that and he wrote a big complaint to the uh management so the company uh, received the complaint that the consumer had bought a soap box that was empty so they immediately said this cannot happen this is uh, wrong and therefore we have to find the solution immediately the authorities isolated the problem to the assembly line in the assembly line where the soaps were put into the box and therefore uh, they find that the problem has occurred in the assembly line and which uh, transported all the package boxes to the delivery uh, department for some reason why one uh, box uh, did not get there nobody knew and they said uh, even this cannot happen uh, in our company uh, from this time onwards and therefore they uh, called the engineers uh, to solve this problem and post it the engineers worked hard and they find a solution with the x-ray machine manning 2% etc etc no doubt they worked hard and they worked uh, fast they spent a whopping about 1 million dollars to do so and they have solved the problem they said year afterwards uh, from our company none of the boxes will go without the soap <laughs> then what happened was uh, uh, when in the rank and file employee we have a small company this is a big company which they could afford it company was posted with the same problem they did not get into the complication of x-rays computers etc instead they came with a solution they bought a strong <coughs> industrial electrical fan and pointed out at the assembly line they switched off the fan on the, on it and each box has is passed if it is empty it will automatically uh, blow away so there is no point in spending 1 million dollar for that you can solve it about 1600 rupees uh, the solution can be got and what i am trying to impress upon you my friends is that don't look at the problem look at the solution and if you have a will to solve the problem you will definitely do and your attitude is also very important you should think that you must be able to solve the uh, problem so moral is that always look at the simple solutions not at the problem devise the simplest possible solution that solve the problem and take the challenge not with why you can you you cannot you do not give it that way you cannot do you cannot do etc but you have to take it how i can do it and if you make that one 
that you will be able to uh, solve all your problems. So whether it is um, automobile industry or any industry, any of the engineering, please look at uh, the problem. Don't look at your problems. Look at the simple solution, how I'm going to overcome it. So the electric vehicles to be successful in India, you, you must uh, pray uh, God. So uh, what God uh, that you have to pray that you will done. And therefore, uh, what I am trying to impress upon you is that if you have understood what my presentation talk, I was using, we were using horses. And from horses, we came to the electric, uh, to the mechanical means that the cars, SUVs today and to tomorrow, we are going to move towards electrical vehicles. And therefore, if you have to understand the basic of that, you require a little bit of a thermodynamic uh, understanding as well as you have to have a basic understanding of these engines because these engines are not going to go in another five or ten years so until uh, the, this generation maybe another 25 30 years this will be there and therefore try to have the, some basic knowledge on these two subjects namely thermodynamics and the uh, internal combustion engine and let me conclude my talk with a uh, short story uh, saying that attitude and will uh, <clears throat> an old man uh, lived in Minnesota and he wanted to uh, spade his potato garden and it was very hard work. Uh, a old man like me, 75 years, and his only son who should have uh, helped him was in the uh, prison. The old man wrote a letter to his son and mentioned uh, the situation and he wrote a very uh, emotional letter to his son. He said, I am feeling pretty bad because it looks like I won't be able to plant my potato garden this year. I hate to miss doing the garden because your mother always loved to uh, planting on time. I am just getting too old to be able to dig the garden. And if you were here, if trouble would have been over, I know that you would dig the uh, pit for me. Uh, and um, uh, if you are not in prison, it would have been helpful. And shortly, the old man received his telegram, for heaven's sake, dad, don't dig up the garden. That is where I have buried all the guns. Probably for that, he is in the prison, I do not know. And then what happened? At 4 a.m. the next morning, a dozen FBI agents and the local police officers showed up, the, uh, showed up and dug up the entire garden without finding the gun. Confused, the old man wrote another note to his son telling him what happens and asked him what to do next. And uh, he said, go ahead and plant your potatoes. Dad, this is the best I could do from the prison. Therefore, my dear friends, no matter where you are in the world, if you decide to do something deep from your heart, you can do it. And it is the attitude that matters and not where you are. And therefore, if you have the uh, will to learn thermodynamics and IC engines, Definitely, those who are interested will definitely learn it. That is my uh, message. That all. So, therefore, my dear friends, all that matters is attitude and will to do. Have a positive attitude and will to do, you will win the world. Uh, these five things I will uh, skip. Uh, it is available in the text. And therefore, further, you cultivate uh, these three following three uh, things. One is uh, dissolve, resolve, and solve. Now, uh, dissolve all your negative attitude and resolve to be always positive, then you will solve all the problem that is facing you. And therefore, anyway, always do the things right. This will gratify some people and will astonish the rest. That is what Mark Twain says. And uh, further, uh, in order to achieve and what I have said, that in order to have a successful for EVs, you have to pray, the, you require the grace of the God Almighty. For this, you have to pray. Uh, then the question is which God to pray. In Hindu mythology, there are so many gods, one for wealth, one for uh, power, one for uh, learning, etc., etc. But I will strongly suggest that you should uh, pray only this God, not any creed, caste or religion in, that is involved. This is the gods of 21st century. I will explain in my next slide which God you have to pray. And this is the God that you have to pray. That is uh, the uh, that is it. That is uh, in order to achieve what I have said, 
you have to pray only uh, this god i said i said that is the god of the 20 21st century that is uh, what you have to do is that uh, uh, why i am saying that because this is the god who is having a mouse in his hand this is the god that you are having a mouse in his hand and without mouse you cannot do anything in this 21st century and therefore that thank you very much for listening and i leave the floor open to people who are the panelist thank you thank you so much sir for a uh, such such an interesting session i think people have really uh, enjoyed and found it very very informative very simple to understand uh we have uh, great reviews as well and i think people are thanking you for this uh, guidance so we'll move ahead with uh, questions sir we have uh, quite a few uh, i'll begin with the other ones that came in early uh, so sir, one is in future uh, do you think solar powered engines will run on the road or battery powered engines uh maybe in uh, uh... Uh, to 2100 onwards that is the 22nd century uh, we may be going for uh, solar power because still the solar power we do not have that much uh, energy density in the sense we require a lot of area for generating the solar power and therefore one way is use the solar power and energize the battery and use the battery as of now and for this these panels have to be the solar panels have to be more efficient and lot of work is uh, going on but probably we may be using the lithium ion batteries uh, nowadays and weaving moving towards the solar power to charge the battery that would happen in another 25 30 years this is my view yes thank you uh, so also somebody is asking is there any study on extinction of petrol and diesel extinction of petrol and diesel Oh, no, I feel that, uh, as I told, that as long as the mankind lives, there is uh, enough petrol and diesel into that. But the rate at which we are using it, the depletion may happen so fast. But what uh, uh, the nature has created over millions of years, these two, uh, these two fuels, namely uh, the, this fuel, the crude oil, uh, which we are converting into petrol and diesel, will come for a long way. This is my view. and uh, why i am saying is that when in 1967 half dozen cars were running and today we are running millions of cars still we are able to supply this uh, uh, petrol and diesel only thing is that uh, what we have to worry about is that these things will not be extinct but when it will be extinct in the sense when you are not able to buy it because at uh, 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 1967 i don't know how many of you know that one liter of petrol i have bought it for 75 paise one liter of petrol was 75 paise in 1967 now today it is about 75 rupees tomorrow if it is going to be 750 or 7500 rupees and uh, even though these fuels are available economically it is not viable for us to buy it and therefore we have to find an alternative solution and we need not have to worry on the thing that this will go out of stock so fast it is not going to be the economic because we are dealing about 5 kilometers down the earth to get this fuel probably uh, tomorrow we may have to drill 10 kilometers 15 kilometers etc but the amount of energy that you put for drilling and if you the amount of energy that is coming out as a crude now if you are spending 10 rupees for drilling and getting 5 rupees Uh, of the road it is economically not viable so from that point of view it will become extinct and therefore what i think is that uh, from the economical point of view we have to find the alternative solution not out of fear that these people are going to be extinct in the near future thank you you scared us with 7500 rupees per liter sir i think everybody got scared after that one line <laughs> 7500 <laughs> it will be too no, much no. to handle if it comes to that no, no. <laughs> no we never thought the 70 by paise i never thought it will come to 7.5 rupees 7.5 rupees to 70 per 100 times it has increased uh, over right. a period and now it is 75 in 100 times it increases it becomes 7500 
of course sir. so uh, one question we have is how to study the effect of bs6 standard fuel oil on bs2 standard engine in terms of life pardon pardon uh, can you repeat how to study the effect of uh, bs6 standard fuel oil on bs2 standard engine in terms of life see the, the 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 standards are ever increasing that is we are putting the stringent condition on that that we have to reduce the nox emission carbon monoxide emission etc etc and these emissions levels has to be brought down and that's why we say bs2 bs3 bs4 bs5 and bs6 barat uh, standards and what we are trying to do is that we are not able to do much on the engine engine has almost reaches its plateau in its development and therefore we have to think about the fuel whether we will be able to uh, refine the fuel in such a way that we will be able to get a very high octane fuel uh, by which we will be able to meet the standard uh, what say that nox level should be so low carbon monoxide level should be almost zero etc etc year by year we are increasing the uh stringent this one to that extent uh the thing suppose if you do that uh, if you are able to the life of the engine will go down because the 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 petrol see when you have wanted to reduce your emissions by the bs2 standard you have got certain limits that you can do so you can uh, emit so much of carbon monoxide so much of nox etc and uh, if you are using the this way that is we are using the present day fuel for the bs2 engine we do not know how 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 is going to apply because you require a high compression ratio and all those things whether those engines may not be able to or if you can you if you use the uh, bs2 fuel to bs6 engine it will never work it is like some people asking whether can i use petrol in a diesel engine or diesel in a petrol engine no if you say it will work it will work but the life will be very much reduced and therefore uh, i would suggest that the corresponding fuel for the corresponding standard should be done if the bs6 should be used with bs6 only fuel only this is my view great sir so we have one which says uh, what is the scope of biodiesel for conventional vehicles will uh, engines be designed for 100% biodiesel yeah the bio biodiesel of course is a renewable uh, source of uh, fuel no doubt about it and uh, what uh, a number of work has been done to produce this uh, bio diesel the transesterification of the vegetable oil you will be able to work on the bio diesel now what you have to understand here is uh, you have a diesel and bio diesel the question is whether i will be able to have a 100% of bio diesel to work in my uh, engine of course the engine has to be redesigned the present day engines have been designed for the diesel and therefore we have conducted lot of studies at iit madras and in the various places uh, uh, in the world and we find that about 20 to 30% uh, increase i mean uh, inclusion of the bio diesel is giving 20 to 30 percent some people say 25 some people say 26 percent etc that is what is working with the present day engine but if you can study the uh, the uh, the characteristics or the properties of a biodiesel and if you are able to design an engine for the biodiesel itself definitely full biodiesel can be worked as of today we are able to use not more than about 25 percent of the biodiesel for the engines thank you okay sir uh, one oh. very uh, we have one more very interesting one it says uh, many new innovators have made cars running on water do you think they will be conventional in the future cars running on water hello <laughs> yes yes sir cars running on What? water uh th th there are uh, people who say that is uh, they will convert uh, uh, the water into the fuel and may be able to run it and uh, some people say they will try to uh, make uh, bring out the hydrogen from the water and may be able to get in my opinion is all humbug it is not possible god has created water 
God has created water with H2O. Two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen becomes water. And they are combined in such a way that the separation is become almost impossible. Separation of hydrogen and oxygen, you require a lot of energy to separate it. Unless otherwise you find a method to separate hydrogen uh, from water, then that would be wonderful. But by with water, and with people saying that I converted uh, water into oil, etc., this is not going to happen. Because uh, if the if you, you look at a calorific value, water but per se has do not have the calorific value. Then uh, if uh, if you can find a method to separate hydrogen and oxygen from water, a simpler way by just plugging in that is uh, hydrogen comes here, oxygen comes here, and then you can use water generating on board uh, hydrogen, and you will be able to. As I told during my presentation that hydrogen is the best fuel for the engine, but water, you cannot run with water. Thank that you. was very helpful, sir. So we hmm. have actually two very uh, interesting questions, I think, which I would really like uh, to take with you before we end the session. So uh, I think uh, this is a teacher asking, uh, what components of electronics should be included for teaching uh, BTEC students uh, while teaching IC engines so you know that they can understand the working of uh, sensors microcontrollers that are used in automobiles today like VVTI DTSI and uh, which books do you think uh, can be recommended for better understanding of these components for BTEC students uh, please uh, I, I'm not saying because it is my book I have uh, devoted a chapter on engine electronics I have included a chapter on engine electronics in my book I read that book. I have uh, said about the various sensors, etc. What are all the things that are uh, happening? How it can work? But I am still uh, revising it for my next edition. Uh, those engine electronics, etc. Uh, and I would suggest that if you would like to read as a first day this one, you please uh, take my book and read it. You will be able to appreciate it about the electronics. So, what the electronics required for the uh, mechanical engineering people is the basic understanding of the transistors, uh, diodes, and uh, the future of that. Uh, now everything is in the form of a chip. How will be able to make it? And, and we mechanical engineers have to be here at the uh, mechatronics engineers. Uh, so the syllabus should be accordingly changed. A basic knowledge on the electronics is a must for mechanical engineering if you have to understand the uh, electronics of the engine to the, to some extent i have uh, given all the details in my book uh, kindly follow my book thank you last uh, last question sir uh, somebody asks uh, is blue ammonia going to be a new fuel like hydrogen uh, people are uh, talking about ammonia etc but ammonia is uh, very toxic and ammonia, as of now, that we are using it for the uh, agricultural uh, purpose. And therefore, uh, if you start uh, using ammonia uh, for the engine, then we will not have anything to eat because they are using for fertilizers. Fertilizers, and therefore, uh, we have to be cautious. But if you say by using ammonia, can I run an engine? Yes, it is possible. But uh, how long it will run? Yeah, the present day engine will not run because ammonia is quite toxic. And therefore, uh, these are all uh, the exotic thinking that we have. And but as of now, the two fuels which are established as petrol and diesel is what is going to rule the world until the internal combustion engine dies, which is stay, which will take another one century, in my opinion. It is not going to die so easily. And therefore, Ammonia or biodiesel or uh, alcohols, very alternate fuels are also people are trying. And about which also I have done and alternative fuels in my book as a chapter. Please read that. You may be able to get better insight into that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think uh, we are about time. Any uh, last words for our audience? How many participants are there? 
करंटली लाइव नाइंटी सेवन सर नाइंटी सेवन करेक्ट नो आई एम आस्किंग एनी लास्ट वर्ड्स फॉर दी लाइव ऑडियंस वी हैव एनी पार्टिंग वर्ड्स फॉर देम एंड देन मे बी वी कैन क्लोज द सेशन या Okay, so maybe uh, I we we have some issue, but okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining in for this amazing sh- session. I think it has been really insightful, really creative, and such a simple way of serve uh, of explaining uh, such uh, things to us. And I think it has been beautiful covering this journey from hospa to hospa with you, sir. Uh, thank you, all the attendees, for joining us today. Uh, anything uh, that you want to get in touch uh, with us uh, for, please uh, write to us at support. India. The rate image education. dot com. Also, in case you want to buy Sir's book, uh, Sir's book picture, the link to the book and the ISBN of the book are available on your screen. For any other help, please don't hesitate to write to us. The certificate of participation will be emailed to you on your registered email address. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Sir. Thank you, attendees. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, shall I close?